From local stories to Wayne County news, get ready to dive into everything happening in North Carolina with Taylor House Publishing. Got a story to share? Shoot us an email at taylorpublishinghouse at gmail.com. If you're looking to publish your book or need some top-notch Standing on business. Of, not going to these meetings and, and, and oh, yeah, all yeah, of that yeah, coming yeah, in. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fact, though. That, watch you. Don't vote for nobody that's today black. She don't hold no weight. A lot of black people look at you like you're crazy, especially that judge. I keep seeing everybody, y'all. You're guilty until proven innocent with her. I bet you that. Shit, man. Hey. Hey, I'm gonna tell you one thing about it, though. And she black. That's on. That's on Erica every scale. James it ain't the way. She don't care nothing about you. Not We're standing ass. on business today. Dead ass, yeah. My boss said when you go to that ballot, man, you be seeing Erica James <laughs> specifically. I'm voting vote for Billy Strickland. At least I ain't no me me vote for her. Like good up there, like okay, she black. She gonna she gonna look at the real and see what's really going on, and not me, cause I ain't never going back. But they, you gotta think about you and everybody like one in front of these people. These people yeah, you vote for, away. yeah, they slapping your kid, they slapping your family upside the head for stuff that the police might have. It's a lot of stuff. It's like. They all of them ain't right. So anything they do, you got to go to jail for. You got to go to court for. So when you go to court for, bam, you got to see her. And she look at you just like this. I swear to God. I ain't had kids. I'm like, man, what you looking at like that? Real. Like, I wouldn't care. Like, that's, I ain't think she would like that. I had my people vote for her when I was in prison, man. Ooh. And I would, I done seen her in that courtroom when I was in the courtroom with my son, how she looking at people and all that. Yeah, man, like, yeah, yeah. If you don't want to work there, don't work there. It just be so, bro. It just be a lot of people in power in the courthouse. They really be looking down. You know what I mean? Standing on business. All right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Richard Taylor. I'm back with another episode of Taylor House Publishing. And I had to put on a white t shirt for this one. Uh, shout out to my boys that you just saw on the screen from the Standing on Business podcast. Uh, the man Ted Bundy, Vars, Glenn Coles, I believe that's his name, and DJ Mickey D. Uh, doing a uh, production, their podcast is on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. So uh, check those men out. But um, it was a conversation that you just heard, and I think that is very relevant to not only the local political climate as well as the national political climate and what I like about you know listening and hearing people from diverse backgrounds is they give you a different perspective a different viewpoint on uh, people or situations or subject matter that you may have no idea of. and in this clip um, and I'm gonna play it again we're gonna break it down once again shout out to the guys on the standing on business but in this clip, they're talking about a local candidate for judge. Now, that candidate is Judge Erica James, right? Erica James is running for uh, the Eastern District Judge or Superior Court Judge or something like that. And she is a black woman, right? But as you hear the men talking in this uh, clip, they're giving you their opinion on how much it matters that she is a black woman. Meaning, and I say this often, just because there's a black face in a high place, that doesn't mean they're for black people. Now, uh, Boris has given his personal experience with Judge James. Um, I've had people come to me saying similar things that Boris is saying in the video. And what I want people to understand now, I know I know Judge James not on a you know 
first name basis, but we have been in certain events. I've had the opportunity to listen to her speak. I've also, you know, questioned her uh, on things such as this nature. I, I remember one event, uh, I just wanted to uh, meet her because I've heard that she was the first black judge here, I think back in 2014, first black female judge of that matter once again. That's a, 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 a celebration that we're still celebrating here in the 21st century, but nevertheless. Um, but I asked her a question specifically, and I said, look, with you being, you know, a judge, a black judge, do you find it hard not to be harder on black people because you don't want your majority white constituents, your cohorts, your co-workers your associates to feel that you are being easier on black people. And this is what she said. She said, well, when I'm up there, you know, my mind, you know, goes away and I don't see anything. I'm just in a zone or whatever. Now, that sufficed for, you know, that time. However, we all know that in this country, there are certain deep-rooted characteristics I say that don't allow us to be impartial or prejudiced or, or, or you know unbiased in certain situations meaning when you're in those positions and I've, I've experienced this myself not saying that she is doing this but I've experienced people black people in high places who are, who have been put there or voted there or you know who have been placed there feel the need to to capitulate to acquiesce to the ones that put them there rather than the masses of the people now we're going to break this video down i'm going to play it um you know so you guys can really hear what they're in once again i i, I and shout out once again this is fair use man i i appreciate y'all for touching on this subject because many people will be afraid to say, okay, well, not. Nah, I'm voting for Strictly. I'm not voting for this black woman. And people will say, well, how can you not support a black woman? Look, as I stated before, all skin folk ain't kin folk. Not saying that this hurt. You know, but just because someone is black does not mean that they have the best interests of black people in their hearts or on their agenda you know once again they may just want the position but um you're gonna hear these men bring forth some 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 great points and i'm just go ahead and play this video again um and then i'll probably stop it in between just to expound on what they're saying because you may not bars talks kind of fast bundy is kind of you know smooth and so i'm gonna break it down just in case you're not understanding what the brothers are saying uh, in the video. All right, here we go. Standing on business. Up, not going to these meetings and, and, and oh, yeah, all yeah, that yeah, coming yeah, in. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a fact, though. That, watch you. Don't vote for nobody to stay black. She don't hold no weight. A lot of black people look at you like you're crazy, especially that judge. I keep seeing everybody y'all. All right, so there you go. If you ain't him, you said don't. He said don't vote for nobody just because they black. It don't hold no weight, which is true. A lot of black people look at you crazy, especially when they're in positions of power. Then he said, especially that judge that I keep saying to everybody, your, which is Erica James. Now, once again, the fact that don't not voting for someone just because they're black, you have to realize that even if they are black, they may not have any relation to the black everyday person struggle or their plight. Like he said, they look at you sometimes like you crazy. Now, I've experienced this in sales, you know, in life, in court, in business, where someone who my color will, you know, dressed up in a suit, getting out of their Mercedes, and, you know, I may come up to them, you know, with my books in the parking lot, and I say, hey, sir, my name is Richard. You know, I've written these four books. Would you like to support me? And they'll look at me like, what are you doing talking to me? Get a job, bum. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or or something like, or my favorite. Oh, oh, oh are, are they online? Okay, I'll look them up online. Just say no. 
Because you're not going to look them up in line. They're right here. What do you have to look them up online for? Like they're right in your face. Nevertheless, that's a whole different subject. But what I'm saying is certain black people in power look down upon other black people who they deem not on their level. Let's say that. You know, not on their level. I, in this case, not saying this is the way she looks, but I've seen it. Oh, I'm a judge. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm judge such and such or, you know, I'm doctor such and such or, you know, I am P I have a PhD from, you know, such and such. And I have my uh, doctorate in bicentennial transcendental intersectionality and with a minor in, um, you know, <laughs> all those terms that don't mean nothing in real life. But that's a whole nother subject. Leave. But we're going to continue with the video. Guilty until proven innocent with her. I bet you that. Shit, man. Hey, hey, I'm gonna tell you one thing about it though. And she black. That's on. That's on uh, every scale. James ain't the way. She don't care nothing about you. Not that standing ass. on business today. That ass, yeah. My boss said. When so he said once again. Then look, this is Erica James. You know she don't care nothing about you. You know he said you are guilty until proven innocent. In his experience. And that, that's what he has to go on. He said it pretty much it ain't the way for, you know, black people to vote for. This is his opinion. And he's standing on business. When you go to that ballot, man, you be seeing Erica James <laughs> specifically. I'm voting for Billy Strickland. At least I ain't no. All right, so cut. He said he's voting for Billy Strickland. Now, me, I've had personal interaction as well with Mr. Billy Strickland. I actually have this book and I think I did a um you know a video about his book from from Cowboy to the Courtroom it details his rough life for pretty much from rags to riches now I, I know people use that term a lot but you know his story is literally that you know he came from abusive home relationships uh, you know just you know left home at 15 or orphan all those things right and I have seen his work in the community, working with Ashford Boxing Club, um, gave me, upon, you know, just meeting him and somebody referring to me, a healthy donation, one of the largest donations uh, earlier this year to take a busload of underprivileged black kids to a Charlotte Hornets. Uh, basketball game and I've heard several things that he's done in the community but also in his work in the courtroom he has been actually jailed and reprimanded by court officials for going against the grain fighting for what is right not having to capitulate to his white counterpart so that is an advantage that he has because you know, him being a white man, let's be honest, he don't have to worry about them reprimanding him. You know, he can, he, he he does, but, you know, he has a fighting leg to stand on, you know. But in situations where black lawyers are in a courtroom, which is ran by predominantly white lawyers and white judges and white DAs, they feel... And I've seen it personally. I'm probably going to have to do a story on this this lawyer right here. Not this lawyer, but another lawyer um, who, once again, just wants to, as Kwame Brown says, go alone to get alone. They don't want to make no waves. They're going to do whatever it takes to fly under the radar, make things easy, keep getting their paycheck, keep getting their position without fighting for what is right. And contradictory to what other people are doing, but uh, let's continue. We be vote for her like you know they're like okay she black she gonna she gonna look at the real and see what's really going on and not me because I ain't never going back. But they, you gotta think about you everybody like one in front of these people. These people yeah, we vote for away. yeah they slapping your kid, they slapping your family upside the head for stuff that the police might have. It's a lot of stuff. It's like so what he's saying is once again black people have to go in front of these judges. And when he said they slapping your people upside the head, he doesn't mean literally what he's talking about. They slapping them with major time. 
And you know, once again, he and 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 and, and you know, he mentions his own interaction coming up uh, in this video with Judge James. Hey, they all of them ain't right. So anything they do, you got to go to jail for. You got to go to court for. So when you go to court for, bam, you got to see her, and she look at you just like this. I swear to God. I had kids. I'm like, man. Once again, I've seen those demeanors. Those demeanors, those tough demeanors, which, in my opinion, a lot of black people in those positions feel like they have to exude, especially when they see black people, to make it clear to their white counterparts that, no, I'm not going to look out for these niggas neither. Now, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whatever you want to put. I ain't, I ain't looking out for these. I can't stand them neither. I'm just like you. Right? Some people have that viewpoint. Well, yeah, I'm I'm just we're gonna I'm gonna later hammer even harder than you, boss. It's the Stephen from Django syndrome. You know, it's that you know, it's that PTSD, that post traumatic slavery disorder syndrome uh, that we have when we look at each other as I gotta hold you down to keep my spot in the big house. Let's continue. What you looking at like that? Real, like I wouldn't care. Like that's, right. I ain't think she would like that. I had my people vote for her when I was in prison, man. Woo! And I would I don't see her in that courtroom when I was in the courtroom with my son, how she looking at people and all that. Yeah, man, like yeah, yeah. If you don't want to work there, don't and once again he said himself, look, he have seen her in the courtroom looking at people with an ill demeanor. And once again, people from different backgrounds, we have a an ability to see things that most people don't see. Many people may see, you know, just James or whoever in the streets and, you know, with the with the business suits and the, the great signs and, you know, and that's all you see. But he's had an opportunity to see a different side from his point of view, standing on the opposite side of justice. Let's say that. And so uh, he has a personal experience that he can that 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 he can speak to. Work them. It just be so, bro. It just be a lot of people in power in the courthouse. They really be looking down. You know. What I'm Standing on business. And just like Ted Bundy said at the end, a lot of people really be looking down. Like you see these brothers right here, right? These are my brothers, braids, locks. Do rags, you know what I'm saying? Chains, vernacular swag. I don't see myself no different from them, right? And a lot of people will see me in the same category as them, right? I don't see my. I, these brothers are very intelligent. They may speak it, they may relay it in a different way, and I know I have a, a diverse audience, so that's why I kind of have to translate so you guys can understand. But, um, you know, these brothers are very intelligent and I respect their viewpoint. Now, once again, he, he states that a lot of people look down and he, and, and he said he's seen her in the courtroom with his son and her demeanor. Now, also, he stated he had his people to vote for her, for her when he was in prison. Standing on business. He ain't scared to say I've been in prison, but he also said I ain't going back, you know. So he literally said he got people to vote for, and then, you know, he was able to see how she acted when she got out. No doubt he voted for her because she was black, just like a lot of people are probably going to vote for. But once again, as I say, all skin folks ain't kin folks. Now, with me knowing Billy Strickland and the work that he's done and read his book, I have a lot more knowledge of what Billy would do in certain circums, certain circumstances than what Judge Erica would do. Now, if 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 he gets in there and does something different, then I would have to judge him on that basis. But from what I've seen him do in the community, I have more information that would lead me to believe that he would be better 
for the underprivileged, the underserved, let's 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 let, let's be on the black community, then I have information to the contrary with Judge James. Now, you know, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, once again, they said, you know, the people who, who I've spoken to about her in the courtroom, they've said, well, yeah, she, you know, the, she was hard on black people. She, she was, you know, she was this, that, and the other. Like, you know, you know, she, 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 she was, you know, I, th I think they said she locked, you know, people up, you know, for, I don't know, like I said, but the, 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 the perception that was given to me from her was that she's harder on black people in the courtroom. And I just explained why. You have to be harder on black people in that position just to make sure that, you know, your constituents don't come to you and say, hey, you know, why you let that guy off? And you have to explain. Now, once again, because of, let's be honest, because of Mr. Strickland's whiteness, he can be more lenient and he doesn't have to worry about anybody reprimanding him or threatening him because his his his, his standing, you know, he 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 has a, a a a bigger or a healthier leg to stand on. Let's be honest. We can call it what it is, right? And so this is what I'm saying with the overall presidential election. I'm, I'm not going to try to get into this too much because people uh, are saying, yeah, you got to vote Kamala because she's black and she's, you know, this and she's that. But there's been several people who I know personally that were who have been studying the political arena in Los Angeles shows how she exhibited that same vitriol when prosecuting or, or passing laws against black people and you know, being more lenient to other or, or, or championing the cause of others. Now, once again, uh, we have to realize the cultural factors in this. Now, if if I'm black, but I grew up in Idaho around, a, I was adopted by a white family, had all white friends and relatives, went to an all white high school, went to an all, you know, um, you know, all white junior college and then, you know, for, for graduate school, I spent two years at Howard and then I go back home, you know, I meet a couple of black people, but my overall mentality, my cultural would be white, even though my skin would be black, I would have more of the ideology of a white person. And so that's what, you know, when, when people push back against uh, Miss Harris, that's what they're they're saying. Okay, yeah, she's black, but that doesn't mean nothing. Just because she's in a sorority, I've known many people in the sorority who didn't like black people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I know many people, black people in sororities that could care less about the everyday common plight of black people. That's what they call the bourgeoisie or the elite. So just like in this case, you know, just because as my man Barr said, just because a person is black that don't mean they have the best interests of black people. And it's not saying that Trump has the best interests of black people. But, you know, that's why I like to say neutral. Like, none of these people have the best interests at heart. And it's just like, you know, people say, well, okay, we'll vote Democrats, you know, because they're for the black people. There's a lot of Democrats who don't like black people. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it cracking. Right. There's a lot of Democrats that don't like black people, but they happen to not like Trump a little more than they don't like black people. So that doesn't mean that they're going to be for black people. If Trump don't get in, there's still going to be some racist policies pushed by some racist Democrats. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is like. All of the racist things that have been done haven't just been done by Republicans. They've been done by Democrats, too. And I'm not talking about in the 60s. I'm talking about in the 2020s. Democratic cities and mayors and governors have refused to, to prosecute police and shootings. Democratic uh, prosecutors have done the same thing. So all of this bipartisanism, one is bad and one of, one of is good, is part of the divide and conquer. 
But as this brother saying that he is voting on his interests. His interest is not her being a black woman. I'm pretty sure he loves black women. He has a black daughter, some black granddaughter, some black sisters, a black mama whom he loves to death. That has nothing to do with it. And I hate when people try to shame other black brothers for saying, okay, I, I'm not voting for her just because she's a black woman, right? That's not a good reason to vote for, just like Voting for Obama because he was a quote unquote black man was not a reason to vote for him. But we've been so psychologically disadvantaged that we feel that, oh, yes, this is, yeah, this is a win for us. Even though when they get in those positions, we are the last people that they think about. They give tangibles to everyone else, every other group. But then when it comes to us, the, the famous quote that she says, well, Let's really be clear about that. So I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. And I had to play that there, right? You know what I'm saying? Because that, listen, that, but we can, people can do anything else for other people. But that is what I was talking about earlier. She can't say that. And everybody always say, well, you, you can't run and say that you're going to do anything just for black people and think you're going to win. But why can... They do anything for anybody else. But immigrants, women, the LGBT, Ukrainians, whatever group that comes and say we need help, anti-Asian crime legislation, right? But when it comes to us, oh, we can't do that. What do you think you, this is? This ain't like that, but it's like that for everybody. So I think people are starting to wake up. My brother's right here. You know, they very woke. They very conscious. And, you know, they probably feel like that on the national level too but when you speak like that you get pushed back but you know i just had to come up here because you know i seen this this clip today shout out to dj mickey d i seen this on his uh facebook shout out to the boys right there the men right there let's say that let's correct that the men right there on standing on business podcast um for doing their thing this is fair use by the way now, hopefully y'all will have me on now. We've been missing each other, you know, for about two weeks now. Schedule's not coinciding, but, you know, the brothers invited me on, and I definitely, I would love to be up there, man, because I don't hate. I congratulate them brothers. I'm doing their thing. Y'all, make sure y'all go check them out. I think it's every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Check those brothers out. They speak... They be speaking some real stuff. You might not understand them because he talks so fast, but if you ever need a translator, you know, so I'll be on the side like this, you know what I'm saying, doing doing some, uh, you know, doing some, uh, doing some translating, man. But shout out to the boys, man, uh, to the men, man, and, and, and I thank them for, you know, standing on business and sharing unpopular opinions because especially in the South, you know, people feel like, okay, if, if, you know, this person is black, you got to vote for him. And, um, you know, sometimes that may not be for your best interest. Sometimes it may. Nevertheless, 919-587-7782. Peace and love. Y'all have a blessed day. Taylor House Publishing. Speak with Richard directly at 919-587-7782. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and invite your family and friends to watch. From Wayne County to the Carolina Coast. I was screaming news you love most. Tune in on YouTube, don't miss a beat. Little stories that keep you on your feet. Tell her how sweet got the school. Tell her how sweet got the school.